Okay, so the exhaust manifold is taken off and so far what can be seen from the exhaust ports they all look uniform except the first one it looks like that's where the coolant was getting into the exhaust system because all the rest of them dry this one is uh, well it's not wet right now but uh, it's completely different coloration and it's, it looks uh, greasier uh, so it seems to be if there if it is the head gasket failure and the the head is not cracked then that's that's the area seems to be the the point of failure of course we'll use this time to do some uh, regular maintenance we'll replace the spark plugs spark plug wires I don't know when any of this stuff was uh, changed uh, without a doubt a previous owner was taking care of this vehicle I wouldn't say um, well, very decent let's put it this way well <clears throat> also we intend to replace the the rotor and the distributor cap uh, looking at the distributor cap it doesn't show too much wear um, but it's not very expensive and it's a good time to replace both especially as we are um, preparing this vehicle for a long journey all right the intake manifold is ready to be removed and so far it has been um, the most work because the access is uh, very limited it's really hard to, to get to those bolts there's two studs and the rest of them are bolts um, what else to say about it I don't know maybe it is easier to remove it if one is to split the manifold it will, uh, it will split in half right in this area and it's um, it's possible we'll see once we will be installing it back we'll see what's easier but uh, there's a <clears throat> bunch of stuff of course has to be disconnected there's the support bracket Mitch is uh, removing that last bracket from the engine I mean the last bolt that holds the bracket down the down there on the bottom and it will be ready to be pulled out to be pulled out um, it's progressing but um, it just so happened that we we can afford to keep it uh, off the road for a while and not to mention that the parts are not here anyway I had ordered it I think I mentioned it before um, from uh, dealership down in in Georgia uh, they give pretty decent discount uh, so I ordered uh, the whole gasket kit and uh, should be here by the end of the week all right today is another day <laughs> and uh, our intake manifold is still here and I don't know who is who to credited with but that bundle of wire over there that one over there that uh, feeds or receive receives the data from some of the sensors sen some of the sensors I don't even know what they all are probably knocking sensors temperature sensors whatever they are but the bundle of wire goes down between one of those piping or whatever the, of the manifold so there is only two ways either <laughs> cut those wires and splice them or disconnect all the sensors fishing it out and then we'll be able to remove the exhaust manifold pretty incredible Toyota engineers known for efficiency but between the fuel filter location and this stuff 
kinds of, kind of, uh, I don't know. I doubt that somebody, the previous owner or whoever worked on this vehicle routed that way. Most likely that's, that's the way it comes from the Toyota. At least that's what I tend to think, but well, like me and Mitch were talking, it's not like you have to remove intake manifold very often, but I just don't see the purpose of routing that, that way. A little bit longer wires, it could have been routed a different way. It just, this is just incredible. So Mitch is going to take a look where all those, some of the, let me see if I, Get up here I don't know if there's going to be enough light but some of those sensors are fairly easy accessible at least now where the manifold is out of uh, unbolted and uh, and out of its place uh, there is three almost in a row in that area there there is one that's going down there but it splits in that area over there, some of the wires going possibly to, towards the transmission, probably some going to the to the starter, and uh, this uh, bunch going this way. Anyway, it, th this is just boggles my mind. I'm not cussing anymore. <laughs> I just we discovered it yesterday, and uh, I'm kind of over it. But uh, I don't know. The, to me. To me, it's kind of uh, awkward way of doing it, and but that's where we are at. So, Mitch is going to climb under, see what else needs to be disconnected. Those three, and the fourth one down there are already disconnected. So, hopefully, it will be uh, pretty easy to locate the rest of them, disconnect them, and fishing it out. Uh, I'm kind of tempted, maybe cutting them and rerouting them, but. On the other hand, it's probably will be easier just to disconnect and fishing it out, and hopefully, uh, I wouldn't have to deal with any of this anytime anytime soon. Well, since I'm on a subject of wiring, another thing that is uh, really awkwardly designed is the whole actual bundle that comes from the firewall down and some of the wiring going this way some of it goes down but the location and uh, everybody who has been owning Toyota Land Cruisers for a while uh, know about the problem that a wiring bundle right now it's wrapped in some kind of uh, heat uh, shielding material but it's right next to the EGR uh, pipe that goes to the EGR valve. I'm hope I'm hoping I'm calling it all correctly, but any anyway, all those hot gases on that rust pipe right there are going ne right next to the, all that bun bundle of wire, and usually people uh, have to put additional wrapping in order for the wires not to get melted, and then it's a uh, it's a nightmare. So of course, when we'll be putting it together, we'll remove that old um, sh shielding material and uh, rewrap it. Make sure that uh, we're not going to have any issue down the road. All right. So the manifold is out. The harness. The harness. We tried. Actually, Mitch tried it to disconnect down once it goes through the um, intake manifold and all those connections, but it just too much is involved. It goes back to the, in the trans transmission. All those connectors are pretty much from management, uh, engine management computer goes back there. So we were almost uh, ready to cut them and splice them. But then Mitch thought of actually looking into where it's connected to the engine management computer and it goes through here. So we disconnected all those plugs from the, there is about three or four plugs. There are fished it out and then through the manifold and here's all the harness. 
disconnect it. And that's the, the easiest way we've found it to disconnect. And it's probably what most of the people do anyway. All right, so the timing cover is off. Right now, we'll need to remove the timing gear. Um, the next, the tensioner, the chain tensioner, which is right here on the side. There is two, two nuts that will uh, release the tension on the chain. Then it can be uh, slipped off. And I, I'm thinking next this plug here will have to be removed um, so we can get to this bolt in order to release the timing uh, gear and then all this work is in order to remove the actual uh, shafts both intake and exhaust shaft so we can get to the bolts that actually tie the head to the block and that's what we'll be doing next. All right, so the head is off. Of course, uh, anybody who is going to do this kind of job will need to get a hold of um, factory manual uh, where there is a sequence how to unbolt the head in what um, sequence each bolt needs to be loosened. And same thing was for uh, putting it on. So we're finishing it up, put the new gasket on, slap it on, and start putting it back together. And that's where we are at. Well, right now I'm installing the, um, the water pump, the new water pump. Just wanted to show that when you order a gasket kit from Toyota, at least the guys that are um, on the mud, the, the forum, the Toyota forum, the gasket kit comes even with the replacement gaskets for, for the injectors, which was kind of nice. Um, it's, in my mind, it wasn't part of the kit, but it did came with uh, replacements. Nice. All right, continuing putting it back together. So the camshafts are on. The distributor is on. It's fairly easy uh, to follow the instructions and install all that in a proper um, position. So next the valve cover is gonna go on and the valve cover the kit came with this replacement uh, bushings for the um, spark plug little pipes or whatever you would call them. The old ones that I removed, they were really hard, brittle. And uh, so that, that's, that comes in the kit. <clears throat> the ra uh, not the radiator, but the fan is on. Uh, the new water pump is on will replace some of the hoses um, the main hoses both uh, uh, there is two of them over here and the one over there Mitch has replaced all the uh, heater hoses that go into the cab uh, those will be very hard to reach if they go out so they were not in the bad uh, condition, but we decided to replace them anyway. Um, so it's uh, basically putting the cap on, putting the uh, intake manifold, exhaust manifolds, and then just button everything back up and we will uh, attempt to start it and hopefully everything that we've done, we've done the right way. All right, so a couple of hours later or whatever, maybe three hours later, manifolds, the shields are on. 
all the coolant lines are connected the intake manifold is installed including all the AGR in the back and all that messy stuff um, really there's nothing to um, to mention as far as challenges it, it's all not really enjoyable because everything is tight but not like really crazy one thing I would say is that we rerouted the harness the harness and those who have Toyotas uh, this particular generation they know that the harness is very close to uh, EGR pipe that comes out from the, the head into the EGR, uh, EGR valve I'm hoping I'm um, calling it all correctly but anyway the harness is too close and in many cases it melts so what we've done is we just rerouted it behind, behind the, the head cover and um, put a little conduit there and, and stuff but probably good three inches uh, maybe three and a half inches away from that pipe where it's usually located I don't know if Toyota uh, puts the exhaust tape around it um, mine had it I don't know if it was done by previous owner uh, but from all, all that heat it was actually getting pretty um, uh, beat up so anyway that's the only thing that I would uh, mention that we had to modify um, not out of necessity just out of prudence and uh, there is one more hose that needs to be installed and then the supercharger and it will be ready to fire up to be fired up. It's been a long couple of days it's pretty much put, uh, has been put together so moment of truth I'm gonna start it up now and uh, see if it blows up <laughs> huh? How much? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Oh, prime the fuel filter again.